Good evening and welcome to the newest edition of De Facto Review, a weekly roundup of news shaping Mongolia. Tonight we have our commentator and economist, Mr. Gerald De Facto. Good evening. Mm, good evening. And my name is Nadia Rahoyek. And we are currently live on Facebook and on V Television. So if you have any comments, we'd like to hear your thoughts on Twitter with hashtag Jargal underscore de facto. Coming up on the program, we have three pillar development strategy is the sustainable long term growth option. Mongolia has the highest unemployment rate in Asia. Income and asset disclosure of judges. Investigation of workload of IAAC increased three times past year. So our topic of the uh, day is regarding one of the largest forum organized by the government of Mongolia, Mongolian Economic Forum 2018. This year's event is being held in two sessions and pre-session public and private sector discussion was held at the State Palace on March 28th and the main session will be held in May. Uh, Wednesday's discussion presented government's policy, plan and decision making such as three pillar development strategy, economic diversification, tax reform, uh, social welfare and as well as other related policies. Prime Minister Mr. Hurusuk said during the forum that three pillar development strategy is to secure the independence and economic growth as well as foundation of good governance and stability of institutions. And this uh, three pillar development strategy consists of uh, three reforms which are governance reform, uh, economic reform as well as social policy reform. So Mr. Jargal, how will these three uh, pillar development strategy affect the country on a bigger picture and would you please elaborate on these reforms for our viewers? Yep. First of all, let me say a few words about the forum itself, mm -hmm. economic forum. I mean, I have been part of it for from the beginning for last almost 10 years. And what's happening is last year we have not made it, this forum. We missed the year, the forum last year. And the uh, whole purpose of the forum is to have uh, discussions on the important issues of society by government, private company, and civic society. Yes. But uh, unfortunately, our forum is not based on what exactly had happened last year and what was the discussions we had and what is done based on these discussions. It's like every year just new and separate and we again, at times we repeat the same topics, the even the same mm. dialogues, which was not the exclusion this time. Also, we have discussed all these three pillars. In a, we have been discussing these three pillars in different forms and with different words. And I think oh, the form of our discussions are becoming better, sometimes sophisticated, more interesting. But the content is keep staying. Why? Keep staying, keep staying behind. Why? Because we keep talking about the same thing without deeper analysis, what have been done, what have not been done, and why. But for this forum, as you said, this three pillar, well, let's go one by one. For example, the first one is uh, about responsible governance, right? Mm -hmm. What does it mean, responsible governance? First of all, it's the rule of law, which is not the, uh, pu fully implemented in this country. Uh, why? Because rule of law says that nobody is above the law. And uh, our independent Agency Against Corruption, IAC, saying that they are closing a lot of files from their side after their investigation and pass it to a prosecutor. A city prosecutor, in many cases, they say that they, it will not go to court because it has not enough conditions or factors to be uh, sent to the court. So as a result, a lot, you know, very loud announced criminal cases about corruptions keep staying idle and all disappearing slowly. So it means somebody is above the law. 
and on the other hand um, we have we are missing a lot of information about why is that not going to the court when the one agency says it is criminal case the other prosecutor says no it is not it's criminal yeah. so uh, it's first uh, secondly rule of law says that um, even the king or whoever president everybody should obey the law and it is not law is not to be interpreted by uh, one one person or group of bureaucrats in their own ways which is not the case unfortunately in Mongolia fully and also rule of law says that we should discuss all laws before it's approved by the parliament which is sometimes case which sometimes is not case so it all together it shows really we need to have this uh, governance reform in the country second one is the multi-pillar economic development we have been discussing it but we have not discussed why it is not implemented up to now why privatization is not made what is the problem and uh, they are announcing now even including this government is announcing about me mega projects how they call it we will do it this 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 we will make this new world new power stations but the question is who will do that state or private companies if it is state it's again the same state all the enterprises which are working with loss now so this is the issue to change the third one is about the uh, the about person right it's a human centered social policy well First of all, it's a matter of poverty and unemployment. The new pillar, the new policy said they will create 230,000 jobs. But the question is how? Okay. They say only in the agriculture most probably, most, the majority of these new jobs in the agriculture sector, but how? Now it's only 30% of our labor is in agriculture sector. We don't, we don't see very clear um, figures from which sector and how <laughs> and another issue is how you going to decrease power uh, the unemployment who will be the driver of this uh, employment private sector or public sector according to the president our public sector is, has enough uh, too much he said and we even should decrease twice all the employment in the public sector. government officials yes yeah. but uh, then if we start with the uh, with the if the jobs will be created by public uh, private sector and uh, if, do we have enough conditions for that do are we co do we have good business conditions do we have most importantly cheaper source of money which is not the case 24 25 percent of com uh, credit loan rate is too expensive and there are very few business who can survive through after paying 25 percent of your profit to uh, commercial banks so these are the issues uh, we have discussed, but not in the way we have just now described. Mm -hmm. Do you think this three-pillar development strategy is a long-term sustainable growth option? As you may know, the words such as long-term and sustainability has been, quite frankly, overused. So what is your take on this issue? Uh, in order to, to have all this three-pillar policy, uh, sustainable we should have thriving economy based on private sector which is working on based on the free market and free market is not completely here in Mongolia because price is controlled price for many goods in particular power all is controlled and at certain times it's very low much way lower than the cost and the result we pay from the from uh, the, ta the the budget this remaining cost so this is the first issue. Second, we have not competitive economic uh, structure. It's a lot of state on enterprises which is working with the loss. Though the state, uh, state property committee, old name, the new person, Mr. Nimasur, was saying that uh, for last year, state on enterprises in total have been working with profit, unlike a year before with loss. But he, he was too generalizing because not every company was working with the profit now. And the profits were coming from the commodity price increases rather than the efficiency increases of exactly. the state-owned enterprises. And plus, state-owned enterprises are actually 
political party on enterprises because after they took, if the political party wins the power, they immediately change all ex executive directors, board of that state-owned enterprises, which shows it's a more mostly political party functions. Yes, so with without mm -hmm. privatization, without freeing prices, we cannot have these uh, economic, in particular, uh, reforms sustainable. If economic reform is not sustainable, if private sector is not competitive, the other things are cannot be sustainable because yes. it's based on the taxes from the private sector. Yeah, just as you mentioned, uh, will this like state-owned entities have sufficient competitiveness, right? So, will investors have enough confidence to invest in these companies if it's privatized? Uh, that's a uh, good question. I was recently in, uh, for example, in uh, Canada for large mining fair, mm -hmm. where the Mongolian state-owned mining companies were introduced. But will they invest in them now? Most likely not, because very many things are not clear. What is the truly market value of the company? Who made independent analysis of the company's value today? Who are the management? Uh, are they politically nominated people or professionals? Will uh, political parties will inter intervene or not into the company's business? So, I mean, through the state. So all these questions to be completely answered. Then the investors will come to the uh, state-owned enterprises when they have, they announce uh, privatization. Though, you know, large state-owned enterprises like Mongolian Airlines or the railway station, railway business owned by government, two governments, Russia and Mongolia, it takes time. Now we need a very clear plan, even five, ten years ahead, when and how and which asset will be privatized. So until it happens, we don't see, I don't see a very clear uh, competition, fair competition among companies. Mm -hmm. So this leads to our next topic. Uh, during the Mongolian Economic Forum, Dr. Hashchulon has mentioned that by 2020, there's a possibility of creating 260,000 new jobs. But how realistic is this data? Uh, there's just uh, been a research according to Trading Economics uh, 2017 research. Mongolia has been named as a country with the highest unemployment rate in Asia with 7.3%. Uh, Between 1990 and 2017, unemployment rate in Mongolia has been averaged 6.7%, uh, reaching all-time high in uh, 2016 with 11.6% uh, and record low of 2.8% in 2007. So just in past 10 years, the country has seen a poor labor market with dipping employment. And uh, with uh, global unemployment predicted to rise, there's a possibility of uh, that countries may face uh, challenges to create jobs and fill the work deficit gap to reduce social inequality between classes. And according to National Statistics Office data, number of university graduates in Mongolia rose 21% in the past 10 years. Uh, however, there's a negative correlation between employment and university graduates, which means there's a gap between higher education quality and employment criteria. So do you think the, the education quality might be one of the reasons of uh, rising unemployment? Yes, it's a matter of supply and demand of education mm -hmm. uh, sector on one side. On the other side, it's a quality also of the uh, suppliers, quality. In, uh, in Mongolia, you see, the, if you see the statistics, say now we have about 132,000 unemployed people. Out of them, 45,000 have a special uh, technical and special education uh, to it. And 40,000 of them have a high education diploma. So 80,000 between mm -hmm. out of 130,000, 80,000 of them have qualified people according yes. to their diploma. Yes. But in a reality, when they don't have a find the jobs, two reasons. One, many of them have been not preparing themselves properly because in Mongolia, if you are a student, you have been paid a stipendium for every month just because you are a student. So it was a kind of a lot of incentives for people just to go to the university for whatever sake, to any profession as soon as they have education, as soon as they qualified as a student. Mm. 
that creates artificial demand for education. And uh, plus, uh, we, you, you know, we have interesting statistics is uh, we have 18 state-owned uh, higher education institutions, universities, and uh, out of them, uh, no, no, 75 non-state-owned private universities. And a very stretching, strange statistics, right? By yeah. quote, 18 and 76. Whoever goes wherever to one of these universities, they still get paid up to now almost they were paying every month. So it, it is again the sort of artificial supply started more increase. Yes. On one yeah. side, on the other side, I think the condition of private sector are not very well mm -hmm. because still we have a big tax. Though Mongolia is regarded one of the not very high rank taxes, but this for this economy, yes. F say. If you want to pay thou one million two weeks for your employee, your actual cost is one million one hundred because you pay for income ten percent to the for the employee to your state coffin, right? So twenty percent, about twenty thousand will be for income tax, another twenty thousand plus will be for uh, social insurance, medical care and the pension, etc. And altogether 40 almost percent of the money, the cost for that employee goes to the state, which is still a very big factor for Mongolian small companies to hire somebody. Mm -hmm. So that's why they tend to have, say, a half-time contract. Yes. So that they don't pay the other part. So as a result, we have more unemployment or uh, people who qualify themselves is not actively looking for jobs. Um, Okay, so you have mentioned that, uh, just mentioned that, according to Dr. Hashchalon, uh, currently uh, there might be new jobs which can be up to two, two, 260,000. But uh, this is going to be in the agricultural, mo majority of this is going to be in the agricultural sector as well. But at the moment, agriculture sector dominates the f uh, workforce, uh, taking almost 30% of total employment. So my question is, does Mongolia's agriculture sector have the capacity for this kind of expansion? It's a matter of policy. I don't think today it can absorb that much amount of new uh, employees to the sector. If a Mongolian economy is diversified, or I mean other than mining, we, we need to develop other sectors like agriculture, tourism, and all non all non mining sectors from the money we receive from mining sector. We, otherwise, we have no no chance to have more revenue from other sectors. So this money, how convert through which fund, through which system it will be uh, siphoned, converted into these sectors are questions. But now what we discuss is we m may have a good export of meat or. Uh, meat, Kashmir, etc., Vu, but for that competitiveness, we need uh, competitiveness in the local places where the value is created, and we don't find the particular the way. I don't think a private herdsman, as it is today, can be so productive. So maybe the community, we call it bug, may be competitive if right support is coming and they are cooperating all together, that we have more productivity in agriculture sector, they, then we may have a creating more jobs. But the uh, Prime Minister was saying about mega projects. Mega projects like uh, infrastructure projects, power stations, railways, etc. Yes, those will be, can be a driving force, uh, of driving force for creating no new, employ, employ, new, new jobs. But unfortunately, it is not, it is not always very clear-cut uh, vision for any mega project in the country. Usually they start, then stop. There's a financing issue and a power struggle issue among the politicians. So hopefully this time it will be a little bit different. So the tr uh, trading economics research, according to it, Mongolia has much higher unemployment rate than Pakistan, North Korea, Philippines, like countries with major political and religious conflicts. So what's your take on this? What could be the cause of such high unemployment? Yeah, unfortunately, Mongolia, 7.3% unemployment, Pakistan, 59 
Indonesia 5.5, Philippines 5.3. And really, as you said, we are worse than the countries which have uh, different conflicts, you know, fighting and not normal situation in the country. I, I would say the reason is not competitiveness of private sector, se first. Second, uh, we, we have no, no government instability. On the average, Mongolian governments go for two years or less. And, and unfortunately, whenever the government is uh, changed, replaced with new one, then they replace in public offices. This is called, st we call it state offices, state, state service, right? State service, uh, but state employees. But we need to change the concept itself. It is not state offices, it's public offices. Because they are not serving the state as such, they serve us, the people. That's the mind mentality to change, and we to have them as professionals, and we grow them, brew them, pay well, so that they do professionally their jobs. Instead, we keep changing them every second year, yes. which creates instability, which creates down the road unemployment. Yeah, it, 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 I mean now, uh, public. Uh, Mongolians now more want to be a public officer than the uh, the private sector employees. Why? Because private sector has the problems, as I said, with this um, not competitive conditions. Yes. Since we talked about employment, I think we also should talk about salaries as well. Uh, judges in Mongolia are among the highest paid government officials. Uh, in 2015, a uh, salary of judges raised from 2.7 million to 3.3 million to Greek. Uh, this was one of the measures of fighting corruption and abuse of power within officials. And uh, the law of Mongolia on anti-corruption, which was adopted in 2006, requires member of the ju judiciary to declare their assets and income. And in 2017, uh, in total, 499 judges have disclosed their income and assets. According to this disclose disclosure, we highlighted highest income, uh, which belongs to Supreme Court Judge uh, Che Hospair, with annual income of 248 million Tugriks. And in addition, uh, some members of Constitutional Court of Mongolia have disclosed collectibles, land ownerships, valued more than one billion Tugriks each. So, but keep that in mind that uh, these government officials cannot have secondary employment. So my question is, uh, disclosed information sparked suspicion within the public that corruption and bribery among officials still exist. So do you think this, um, is this a viable amount of income among the judges, or if not, what could be the source of this income? That's the question. It's yeah. two or three million. It's about the equivalent of two or three thousand US dollar per month per judge, right, in mm -hmm. the average, which is a relatively high income. But uh, according to the uh, income statements, which is they have to declare by law, there are some. 50,000 now, I think, employees, state employees to have to declare their e yearly annual income, which gives a good food for thoughts for us because it's by law they have to declare. Now they have declared. Now we look at the uh, the income and we suddenly see there some court, um, some judges are quite rich. Mm. Well, it's nothing wrong with somebody is rich in this society because yes. at the end we make a free market democracy. Yes. It's good if somebody is rich. But the only thing is, if this one is according to the law and the rules, that's fine. Yes. And if they cannot explain, then that's the question. If you cannot explain where from you got so much money. So actually, now it comes to such a level that people are now discontent with this whole information. Now they require, actually, this people inquiry can be can be replaced by actually by the uh, work of the they have an ethics committee and professional committee two committees under the it's called general council of the courts but even the uh, head of this uh, general council has declared 1.7 also billion to weeks mm -hmm. income which he or in other court judges who have declared extremely high incomes they need to just to just explain where they got the money. If they cannot explain, 
they this this uh, ethics committee we should demand them to resign mm -hmm. and then uh, the people should go after because uh, if public offices are receiving, becoming extremely hap uh, rich then there will be lo lo logically uh, questions for ordinary people who hope that they will do a good job in particular the uh, the uh, judiciary system yes judiciary system makes sure that everything should be true and just. Yes, and transparent as well. If without that transparency, we cannot be confirmed or sure 100% that it is, it is uh, illegal. Yes, this links to our next topic. And we have previously reported anti-corruption officers uh, have in opened investigation into Mongolia's current and former prime min uh, finance ministers. More recently, uh, another politician has been accused of embezzlement and abuse of power. Independent authority against corruption officers exposed illegal transfer of 150 million Tugriks authorized by former Deputy Minister Teo Yumbatar to Camel Polo Association. Uh, it has been investigated and transferred to prosecution. And uh, while high government officials are being investigated for uh, abuse of power and embe embezzlement, many of the cases are dropped or even dismissed. Is it due to lack of evidence or is there a deeper issue in the system? Well, this anti-corruption agency says now they have five times more job with their current files they have and then they send many files of criminal cases to the prosecutor and many of these cases are, uh, are stopped by the city prosecutors for being with not in the sufficient approving facts or having no the content of criminal cases etc uh, but unfortunately there is no i i tried so f i tried to find the sources and there is no clear websites or information which is saying which cases is not why is for example why refuse to go to the court and there is not such information very clear information only we have no information that this anti-corruption agency that we send uh, last year i think about 200 plus files and many of them or half of them are refused to be uh, to be criminal cases so which really raises a question of openness of our this justice judiciary system. And without that just judiciary system, we cannot have a serious or uh, the, the rule of laws in the society. And because this uh, rule of law is being eroded and many criminal cases of highly high position Officers. politicians yeah. are staying, idle or disappearing. People don't start less belief in the, the system, and which is very bad because then the people will demand democracies to be replaced by one strong man, what they, they say. And it means the country can be under a rule of one person for many years until he dies or another you know, d'etat happens and lost generations, lost freedom, and lost economic independence. So it's very key issue of having this system uh, being transparent. We demand those prosecutor offices really announces every case immediately why is not criminal case. Then the question arises why then the anti-corruption agency says that it's a criminal case. What uh, between them what happened? Yeah. One says criminal, the other says not criminal. So which one is not working? Which one is lying to us? So that's the issue, the Mongol Mongolian public to know more. Yes. Unfortunately, we're uh, at the end of the program. And Mr. Jarrell, do you have any further comments? Well, happy, very happy to have you for this show tonight. Thank, Thank you, very you very much, much for spending this time with us. And you can see our program also, as we said earlier, on Facebook Live and it will be posted on our website jagaldefacto.com tomorrow. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. Thank you. Have a good evening.